OK, so you've animated a horse walking uh, and also a trot. Now it's time to do a horse run. And this is the uh, handout, uh, and this is the um, cycle that I'd like you to try and tackle. Um, as you can see, it's much faster than the uh, walk or the trot. It's a 12-frame run cycle. Uh, but uh, once again, we're picking up the motion on the rear right foot contact. So if you ever want to tackle uh, a transition from walk to trot to run, then uh, it makes it easier to do that because you're always picking up the uh, motion from the same point. As with all the others, I've, I've, I've annotated the uh, drawing so that you've got the, the, the high point on the shoulders, the low point on the backside, uh, and also the compressed position, which is here at frame 9, and the stretched out position, which is here at frame 3. Remember that a horse, when it, when it runs, stretches and compresses uh, as well as moving up and down. Now, the run is rather like the walk cycle in the sense that the body is making a rocking motion. Shoulders go up, butt goes down. Butt goes up, shoulders go down. So it's, it's, it's making a seesaw motion as it's, uh, as it's running along. So you need to pay special attention to these ups and down, these up and down positions on the shoulders and on the uh, hindquarters. Okay, so um, here's a, a, a nine frame horse gallop. This would be a very rapid horse gallop. Uh, and um, uh, I think probably the, the, the 12 frame one is a, is a, is a better option. Um, and it enables us, as with the other run cycles, um, it enables us to do as few positions as possible. Um, so uh, what you're going to have to do is frame 1 and then 13, which are the same. So you should set your timeline uh, in Maya to 13 frames. Make sure the 1 and 13 are the same. Then 7 is your halfway position. Uh, and then you're going to fill in 3, 5, 9, and 11. Now when a horse um, uh, uh, gallops, uh, you'll see that the, the head kind of rocks forward and back. It's hinged here. So you don't want it moving too much in the translation, uh, in, in, the, in the Z translation, or even in the Y translation. It's really a rocking motion, uh, and that'll be in the Z rotation, hinged here at the shoulders. So that's what you're looking for. Now, the basic um, horse gallop pattern, this is taken from the animator survival kit, uh, are these four positions. Chest up, rear down, uh, a compressed position, and then chest down, rear up, and then uh, a stretched position. Those are the four basic poses for a horse gallop. Here they are in turn. Here's the horse stretched out. Here's the chest down and the pelvis up. Here's the compressed position. Uh, also, is the all, all four legs uh, leave the ground at that point. And there's the um, uh, uh, chest up position pelvis down as the back legs contact. Uh, as with, as with the, both the uh, walk and the run, you should definitely check out YouTube reference. Go to um, horselocomotion.com. Uh, there's lots of good information there uh, as well. Uh, if you're doing a horse with a rider, which you're not, but for future reference, um, you'll notice that uh, as the horse's head moves up, the, the, the rider's head and body tends to move down. They, they, they oppose each other in a kind of scissors action. Here's the same thing uh, shown in slightly more detail. So here's back to our um, uh, uh, back to our 12 frame cycle, starting with the rear right foot contact. And here it is uh, enlarged. So we begin with pose one. There's our rear right foot contact. That's the low point on the, on the uh, hindquarters, high point on the shoulders. Now we have the uh, at frame three, the front left foot contact, body stretching out now. Front right foot contact at frame five. Frame seven, the shoulders are now at their low point and the hindquarters at the high point, and the head is at the high point as well, because the head, as with the walk, the head and the hindquarters are acting in unison in opposition to the shoulders. The body compresses at frame nine, shoulders traveling up now, but traveling down and back to the frame 13, the contact position. So again, like with the other exercises, this is um, uh, uh, an exercise where you really want to print out this information on a piece of paper and have it in front of you so that you can see what you're doing as you're animating. 
resist the temptation to keep it as a JPEG on the screen. You will not look at it. And as you refine your work, you'll find that it's easy to kind of drift off target. Uh, um, and uh, it's easy to drift away from the poses. And it's very important that all these poses look attractive on the horse. Because as soon as you get weird stuff going on, like, say, a bent leg on the front right foot contact, it will start to look very weird indeed. So the basic process is to start with frame 1 and then set a keyframe at frame 13 uh, and make sure that those are the same. You can middle mouse drag uh, frame 1 to frame 13 with your middle mouse key and then hit S and that will copy those curves from frame 1 to frame 13. The next thing to do is the middle position, frame 7, and then uh, fill in the others 3, 5, 9 and 11 afterwards. And then you can let um, you can, as for the in-betweens, 2, 4, uh, 6, 8, 10, and 12, you can let Maya do those for you on spline curves, but you will have to keep an eye on them, because obviously um, Maya will only do uh, brainless in-betweens for you, and they may need adjustments. If you're finding it um, too difficult or complicated, again, as, we, as, we, as, as I said with the walk and the trot, you can always try doing the rear legs first, uh, and then the front legs afterwards. Treat them as two separate independent parts. And finally you want to add details. When the head goes up the ears are going to go down. When the pelvis goes down the tail will go up. When the pelvis goes up the tail will go down. You definitely want some motion on the jaw. The, the, the horse is going to have to breathe. The jaw will open and close. Remember uh, when, a, when, a, when, a, when a horse is running or galloping uh, it's taking in a lot more um, uh, oxygen. So you also want to have some flaring on the nostrils as well. Uh, one final detail I should add is that um, there is of course a difference between a canter and a gallop. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that to, for you to explore. For our purposes um, we don't need to worry too much about that. Um, uh, the gallop and the canter are sufficiently similar that we'll just um, uh, treat them as one. Uh, there are differences but, but I'll leave you to get into that on your own. Um, troubleshooting the rig, again on RET, as you know, the, these front legs can be a little bit difficult to straighten out. Try the compressed fetlock slider on that foot, uh, that can help um, to iron things out. And as with the walk and the trot, you could consider animating them all in one shot. Uh, but um, I'd suggest you probably don't. Uh, the advantage of doing them all in one shot is that then if you want to do the transition from walk to trot to run, uh, you've got them all there in one shot, so you can you can uh, uh, do the um, transitions in the same shot. Uh, however, your infinity curves won't work as well when you're in one shot, and 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 large shots get heavy and cumbersome. So, from the point of view of simplicity of workflow, uh, you might want to work in separate shots. But bear in mind that copying and pasting curves from one Maya scene to another is a is a royal pain in the neck. Uh, so, if you do want to combine them later you will have problems because somehow or other one always does.